Stephanie Mullen, back with you to show you how to quickly incorporate Rampant's matte transitions into your edit using Final Cut Pro 10. Currently, Rampant has three matte transition effects. There are two matte transitions and one paint stroke transition volume. Each of these effects are different, but they're handled in exactly the same way in Final Cut. So let's jump over to Final Cut and take a look at these. All right, as you see here, I have some wedding clips that I want to put together. So let's go ahead and add those to my timeline. And now we want to prepare our timeline to add the transition. So right now this isn't ready. So I need to actually stack these up on top of each other. So I'm just going to move these up just like that. Move that down just a little bit. Now you'll notice here that uh, Final Cut created a gap for my magnetic timeline. We don't need to worry about that right now. That's fine. So I'm just going to make the edit be the same. Now. We're going to start with the matte transitions. So I'm going to go up here, take a look at these. All right, these are high contrast transitions that go from black to white, have some gray values in there. Really cool transitions that have really great animation. All right, to use these, I'm going to select it, I'm going to drag it down, I'm going to place it on top of my clip. I'm then going to match up my edit point here at the end. And all I have to do to make this work, all right, is click on my effect, head over to the inspector. Scroll down to the blend mode, change it from normal to stencil alpha. And let's take a look at this. All right, now we have half of the effect working. All right, that looks great. It comes on, it's perfect. We wanna make sure we the effect ends before my bottom clip does, and it does. So now we have to finish the other half. And to do that, right now the alpha channel is only being read by this clip here. We need the alpha channel to also be shown on this bottom clip. So we have to compound these clips together. So let's select both, right click, click new compound clip, and the title it whatever you want, that's fine for me. And everything's together, and now let's watch it go through. And it's together, perfect. All right, let's try that one more time. Let's do a, let's do a tra add a transition to this clip here. So let's see, that's a really cool one. I like this one with the boxes, so let's go ahead and do this and then cinch that up again. Again, remember we just click on the effect, head over to the inspector, scroll down the blend mode, and change that to stencil alpha. All right, everything's working. There's video to the end of the transition. Let's compound this clip just like that. That was fine. And then let's watch this one. Perfect. Let's rewind the whole thing. Awesome. Easy, simple, all done. All right. Now let's look at something else. I'm going to extend this out a little bit more. I'm going to add these clips to my timeline once again. And I'm going to stack them up again, prepare them for the transition. Move this down just a bit. Extend this out. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is the 4K size of these clips. Using 4K effects in an HD timeline is really awesome because you have a lot of room to play and man maneuver and rotate and reposition and all this other stuff. So it's really, really, really cool. And using these transitions with, with 4K in an HD timeline is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place, go back to my matte transitions, and I'm going to work with this one right here with the triangles. I'm going to put it down here on my timeline cinch it up all right now let's change the effect to stencil alpha okay now you'll see here that it the triangles are pointed up but because this is 4k we can change that but the first thing we have to do before we rotate or reposition or anything is go down here to the spatial conform box right now it's unfit it's fitting the 4k effect onto my hd footage we want this to be none all right see how it made it bigger so now we have the, the wiggle room to play. So let's start with repositioning first. I can actually take this over and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. And there's the edge of my matte transition. So I'm gonna move that back. All right, right there. And you'll see now that I actually have a diagonal transition, which is really cool, okay? So if I make this back to zero, and you can do the other way. So moving this way, all the way over, and now you have you have diagonals going the opposite way. All right, so that's one really neat repositioning. All right, so now one mat has become three, essentially. Now, if we change that back to zero again, 
we can actually talk about the rotation. I can actually make this go, turn it 90 degrees and have a diagonal or a, I guess it's not diagonal, it's going left to right now, right? So it comes on in a different way, has a different kind of animation, all right? There's that. I can also do a negative 90 degrees, which would turn it around the opposite direction. Okay, we have it coming animating in a completely different way. Or if we get really crazy, we can make it 180 and it comes from the top. So you can have so much room to play with these and make these your own and sort of manipulate all you want. So let's go ahead and make this. Let's do the, I like the 90. Let's make it go that direction. Actually, I like the negative 90. It's better. Perfect. Let's go ahead and compound this clip just like this. And we like that title, that's fine. And let's go ahead and watch this clip play through. That's really cool, all right? That's really, really neat. I really like the way that looks, you know? But say, I don't know, maybe your director comes in or somebody comes in, the, the client, and says, I don't like the way this looks. Well, now what do you do? You made already made it a compound clip. Can I fix it? Of course you can. Just click on your compound clip. It's going to open up another timeline, and this is actually your effect. So here, you can actually come in and change it. Maybe they did one at the other direction. Just like that. Go back to your actual timeline. You'll see it's changed. All right, so once you have it in the compound clip, don't worry. It's still editable, and you can change it and manipulate it any way you want. All right, so let's also do the same thing for the top clip. Let's put it back up there. Let's use the circles this time since we haven't used that. So I'm going to take that, drag it up there above the clip. Let's cinch it up. Let's make sure we are on none. And our blend mode is stencil alpha. Now if we take a look at this, you'll see that the circles are a lot bigger, a, a, a lot bigger, as opposed to fitting it, which looks like this, which is a lot smaller. All right, so let's keep it on that 4K size. Let's go ahead and compound this clip and let's see, take a look at what that looks like. Okay. Perfect. Let's watch that all the way through. Now this is the 4K using the 4K native size in an HD timeline. So we can reposition it. We can keep it larger. We can make it smaller. You can do different things with scale. So that's pretty awesome. All right, now the last thing I wanna show you is how to use the paint stroke transitions, which is used exactly the same way that we're using the matte transitions. So let me go ahead and add my footage again and prepare my timeline the same way. Bump everything up, move this down a little, move that down a little and fix this, okay? Now we're looking at the paint stroke transitions now. I only have one downloaded in my, uh, or not downloaded, imported into my editor here. So, but you know, that you can pick up from a wide range of different paint stroke transitions. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna leave this there and I'm gonna show you why in a second. So again, this is exactly the same way as the mats. I'm gonna click on it, but before I show you, I wanna show you that the sizing here, you'll see that there's a, a gap here and there's a gap on the bottom as well. That's because we're fitting again. So we wanna actually say fill, or if you want the 4K size, you wanna say, None. Either way, you can use either one, change the sizing and the scale and all that stuff. But I'm gonna go with fill for now. And I'm gonna come down here to blend mode and I'm gonna put this on stencil alpha. And everything looks good so far. But what I wanna do here is I wanna compound the clip again so that we can see the clip below. That's fine. And now let's go ahead and see this transition in action. That's really cool. Now if you notice here, See how it's black on the end? All that means is that our clip isn't long enough for the, the transition to actually occur. So either I have to move this down, which, and then move this down, which is easy. Okay, so let's check it out now. Now that we have video all the way through to the end. See how there's video down here? Yep, okay. So that's perfect. There's one matte transition. Now let's go ahead and add our next transition clip here. Do the same thing, drag it on top, click on the effect, come down to fill, and let's change this to stencil alpha. There we go, it's working. And we're gonna compound this clip, say okay, 
And then let's watch the transition happen. Whoops, I don't have any footage there. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna change this to make the, so I have no more footage left. So I'm gonna actually go into this and I'm going to extend this clip out, move my transition down, go back to that. All right, now I can extend this out some more and make sure my transition fits in there. So make sure it has video all the way down. It does. So let's go ahead and play this transition. Perfect. Now let's watch the whole thing through. This is with the paint stroke transitions. Love it. I love these transitions. I love the way they come on. It's awesome. But what if they're not fast enough? What if this is too slow? Okay, to retime, that's really easy. All we do is again, click on your compound clip, come in here to your paint transition. We're gonna click on Command R, it's gonna bring up our retiming. And you can retime this, you can make it slower, you can speed it up a little, so let's just speed it up some. Let's go back, and you'll see this is a lot faster. See, really simple, really easy. You can change these, you can manipulate them, you can do whatever you want. So. Really, really simple. I love these transitions. I love how easy they are to use in Final Cut and how easy they, they make my edits look. Let's go ahead and watch the whole thing again. Here we have the matte transitions coming on. Really simple using the stencil alpha and then making a compound clip. All right, let's move ahead to this one. Skip ahead. Here we are using the 4K clips in an HD timeline. We can reposition, resize which is awesome, I love it. Now let's skip ahead to the end. And here we're using paint stroke transitions. Remember, you can retime the transitions however fast you want. You can reposition them because they're 4K. You can do a lot of stuff, and that's that. As always, don't forget to pick up your free matte transitions at 4kfree.com and keep those tutorial requests coming in. We love to hear what you want to see next. You can comment here or hit us up on Twitter at Rampant Design or on Facebook at facebook.com slash rampantmedia. Of course, you can always find more tutorials at rampantdesigntools.com as well. Until next time, I'm Stephanie Mullen with Rampant Design. Thanks for watching. Bye!